You're listening to the world's smartest podcast network. When I go to Sacramento, I will pump up Sacramento. Sacramento. Some say the news is fake. Others say it's real. These two don't have the time to check. Instead, Turner Sparks and Michael Ira Kaplan turn to comics stationed around the globe to be their eyewitness reporters so that you can know what's really going on. This is Lost in America. All right, everybody, welcome to Lost in America, episode 215. My name's Turner Sparks. And I'm Michael Kaplan. You can find me at turnersparks.com, at turnersparks on Instagram. You can find Kaplan at Cap in America on Instagram. This show is at Lost in America Pod. Kaplan, on the show today, we have the great Kevin J, comedian out of Malaysia, who I performed with a long time ago. He's going to be on in just a minute. We're talking about the insane political situation going on over there. But before we get to him, Cap, right. uh, Patreon. Yeah. You want to support this show? Thank you for listening. But if you really, can, we love our listeners. Well, let's only thank them. We like our listeners. Yeah, that's we love we our Patreon subscribers. Exactly. There's a uh, real difference. There's a real difference. We take priority hate mail from Patreon subscribers. By the way, we encourage the hate and we <laughs> respond to it uh, one by one. If just a regular listener sends us hate mail, straight to the garbage. We don't even look at it. I don't even read it. I don't even acknowledge it exists. It's not hate. It doesn't count. But patrons can say whatever they want. They can say my mom wears army boots. They can say, listen, they can say <laughs> they can call me fat. They can call me thin. They can call me ugly. They can call me anything. They, as long as as long as you keep paying us on Patreon, we love you. How so, do you do that, Cap? Here's how you do it. Patreon.com slash lost in America. That's how you support this podcast. Because listen, yes, we have a sponsor now. Yes, we're getting big time. But the sponsor doesn't pay for it. They're a great sponsor, but the engine is the Patreon subscribers. So for $5 yeah. a month, you get three extra episodes a week of just Kaplan and I doing a 30 minute full throttle comedy podcast. Think of it this way. Forget you on your way to work. You listen to morning radio, right? Forget no it. longer. Listen no. to us. Let us be your half hour commute every morning. So that's I love what, Howard Stern. But come on. He's don't, old. Come on. You know, don't come even mention us. our competitors, <laughs> <Captain>. competitors. <laughs> for five dollars a month. Uh, Patreon.com slash Lost in America. You get three extra episodes of Cap and I for ten dollars a month. You you get those uh, three shows. Plus, you get this fantastic sure. T-shirt that Kaplan's wearing right now. Lost <laughs> in America. Number one in Armenia for, for anyone who doesn't know. I don't know what rock you've been living under, but a couple months ago, we it, went to number one in Armenia. If you've and been we, to an Armenian's home, everybody in Los Angeles knows because anyone who's been to an Armenian friend, anyone who has an Armenian friend has heard that our podcast is just on. They just they just run it 24 seven. The Armenians. You've seen they a love shrine us that much. to Kaplan in their living room. <laughs> there is a shrine. It's <laughs> so we went to number one in Armenia. Everybody knows about it. We printed T-shirts because yeah. when you go to number one, you print merch. First rule in podcasting school. I teach you that day one. And listen, <laughs> what else you could do? You could just buy merch from us. I have this great Lost in America number one in Armenia coffee mug you could pick up. We got satchels, handbags, tote bags, iPhone cases, bags. anything, got, right? Yeah. And then for $20 a month, you can do you can get your own ad on this podcast. And we're not talking ad. This isn't like your company advertises. I mean, I guess if you have a small business, sure, why not? But this is if you just want to say, hey, say what's up to your neighbor down the street on his birthday. We'll do that. If you want to say you hate your neighbor on his birthday, we'll do that, too. If you want to plan an insurrection, that's twenty five dollars a month. But we we're here for anything. We don't edit whatever you want to say. Otherwise, you come in, you say, yeah, that auto dealership stinks. We'll print it. Whatever it is, we'll, we'll go with your side. We are we are admin at our core. We love it. You know, exactly. So we're admin at our core. Well, look, our advertisers are big. We're getting advertisements, as you mentioned, and they they pay for the, the, the Lexus. Right. But the gasoline doesn't come cheap. You need you need. So we need the Patreons and we will. We need your money. So please support us. <laughs> <laughs> Kaplan's just begging now. All right. Let's move please. on. Let's get to today's episode. Cap. Yes. I'm going to say what I know about this story. Well, what you can start, but make well, it quick because you're a little verbose. Oh, uh, well, look, whoa, fighting words. Hey, mail. Look at that. Are you a Patreon or something? <laughs> well, all I'll say is that our guest last week, Benji Levitt, said he said, you guys should talk. To, you should go to Malaysia next because they've got 
Wait, our guest last week apart. was Peja Bayevich. Oh, well, two weeks ago, he said, go to Malaysia. That's uh, not true. Peja oh, said, Peja. Oh, Peja said, I can't. Peja God. said, go to Malaysia. You're right. And he said, they've got graft. They've got uh, parliament falling apart. It's a great story. And we looked into it and we said, you're right, because they're, they, they dissolved their parliament, I believe, in March. And they ha- they're, now they've recently decided they're not going to do a new one. Uh, actually, I've got the facts, though, but they're not going to do a new one. I, I understand it <laughs> until until uh, coronavirus is over is what I hear. The, 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 the guy is in charge now is saying we're not going to hold elections until coronavirus. is. And I charge. step in. I missed a step there. So clean that up for me. Yes, you missed a step and you got. The, well, because okay. you talk, you, you came at me with a haymaker. You threw me off. the. Well, I said, know. pick speed up the pace. All right. I'm going to do this speed quick. up. <laughs> Here's what happened. This is so this is so Kevin doesn't have to explain everything. Uh, This is based off what I read in the last hour, by the way. Um, In 2018, their president, uh, sorry, their prime minister um, uh, uh, lost lost his reelection by by uh, his name was Najib. Mm. So Najib was the prime minister of the ruling party that had been in been in charge since the 1950s. Okay, and he lost in 2019. Big upset. Who did he lose to in 2018? He lost to the pre- his previous mentor, who was also the previous leader of his own party, named uh, <laughs> Mahather. Mahather. Uh, okay, so he comes in in 2018. Now, Cap, here's where it gets wacky. He's 94 years old. Yeah, well, you know, that's what they say. In America, we got Biden, who's what, 79? He's a youngster compared to this guy. With oh, age different comes. generation. Yeah, hold on there. He's he's before the greatest generation. What is that? The roaring okay, 20s? Boomer. <laughs> okay, boomer. Yeah, what generation is a 94 year old? <laughs> so Mahathir comes in in 2018, but he comes in as a coalition with this guy, Anwar. Now, right. that gets dicey, too. They have a long history, which we'll get into later where they didn't. They sometimes they like each other. Sometimes they put it. Someone put one puts the other in prison okay? for being gay or something. Right? We'll get to that later, <laughs> Kaplan. Right. Now. Uh, that happened. OK, then they start a coalition in 2018 and Mahathir says, I'm going to put you um, you're going to be you're going to take over. Don't worry about it, t- right. says to Anwar. You'll take over at some point. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be cool. OK, well, sometime never comes, as we learned from a lot of these places. That's why I mixed up the Israel episode. He pulled the BB net and Yahoo move on him. Mahathir's <laughs> out in 2020. Now, Mu, uh, Muhi, <laughs> Muhi is okay. in Muhyiddin's in in 2020, and now the king the king put him in though the king said Muhyiddin you're in and tw- now it's 2020 you're in the king said now it's 2020, and then <laughs> you're in, and now that guy's just running the country he's never been elected as far as I can tell he's just put in as the prime minister and I and it seems like as you said at the very end they're not going to have elections until the end of coronavirus right how, Kevin how did we do welcome wait 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 before I before I before you proper introduction. Question, I want to introduce you properly. Kevin uh, J is a fantastic stand-up comedian based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, he has a special out on Netflix called Everybody Calm Down. It came out a couple of years ago. Very cool. And also he and I performed together in Myanmar at mm. a sports <laughs> bar in the middle of a possible, I don't know if it was a coup going on or what was happening, but Kevin, welcome to the show. <laughs> Genocide outside. Oh, hi. Uh, you got 10% I think of the story. Yes, oh, that's pretty good for us. We'll take it. Yeah, ten percent. I no, actually, you know what? Let me let me rephrase that. I think one percent because there's <laughs> so much more that's happening. That it's you think you're confused. We are confused. Yeah, but right? I, we don't know what the hell is going on. So out of that one percent, I think I got ninety nine percent of the one percent, and Kaplan got you rushed 1% me. Of the My 1%. brain doesn't work well rushed. Let me say. Anyway, <laughs> Kevin, where should we start? Um, we'll leave it up to you. Where do you want? (laughs) So in 1957, right? Uh, 1957, the 10 part series, we we, we got independence and, uh, okay. So that, that's how it all started, right? So we had the ruling party, which was the, uh, which was called the Barisan national at that time. So uh, it started with independence from, uh, uh, from England, colonial. Yeah. England. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, that's when it all started, right? So basically, so we had the ruling called, uh, party, which was Amno. Then they made a coalition called Barisan National with all the other parties as well. So it's about 32 parties or something. And they've been the ruling party for 61 years, right? So in 2018, 
well, just before that, uh, then the last prime minister that we had, Najib Razak, as you may know, um, stole about 4.5 billion US dollars uh, from Malaysia, which is fine. To yeah. be fair, I mean, you know, I mean, it's inflation. Every prime minister has stolen money from Malaysia. So, you know, <laughs> why should he be any different? Uh, Is only that a record? Was, but Is that the most ever, though? 4.5 billion? It, yeah, but if you, take, if you take inflation, I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you've got to put inflation into it. Yeah. But, no, <laughs> I mean, we, just before that, Mahathir Mohammed, who was the prime minister for 22 years before that, from 19... Yeah, yeah wherever and 81 81 81 to 2003 looked it up there you go that's right uh so 21 years or 22 years uh he was prime minister uh i mean he stole money as well i guess uh you know as allegedly uh and but yeah but the thing is he was so powerful nobody could dare touch him right uh but he stole although he stole money i mean i guess you know he developed malaysia as well and we became you know we, we we did well at that time. The Twin Towers, we had, you know, the new airport, blah, blah, blah. Everything was great, right? And then he steps down and then he gives the power to Abdullah Badawi, right? Who basically was supposed to be the clean guy. He, he, didn't, he didn't take any money. He was not supposed to, at least. But uh, he was <laughs> not the greatest prime minister, right? And then uh, Mahathir Mohammed said, no, we can't have this anymore. We should have Najib now. And so Abdullah Badawi said, all right, I'll step down. So he steps down. Najib take, takes over. Everybody was happy. And then we find out that he, you know, he'd, he'd done a lot of things. Like, for instance. <laughs> he did good things. Uh, or no? Oh, no. No, not really. No. <laughs> uh, and then I thought maybe you were saying he did a lot of good. And <laughs> There was a Mongolian model that was murdered in Malaysia. Oh. Though, right. That's when you say I've done a few things. That's that's, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, well, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, he was not involved. So, well, here's the story, right? Mongolian model uh, was murdered in Malaysia. Now, how she, how was she murdered? She was she was shot and then taken to the woods and then they stuffed uh, C four up her crevice and blown up. Ooh. Boom. Oh. Right. So, yeah, they found pieces of, of her remains and mm. they did a test and it was her. So the thing was, uh, two police officers of the special branch or like, you know, like the CIA kind of thing in Malaysia uh, was arrested and they were charged with the murder along with uh, Najib's uh, personal aid or political advisor, right? So he was, now the three of them were charged, but for some strange reason, uh, uh, Najib's personal assistant, which was Raza Baginda. Now he was acquitted straight away. Like, yeah, nothing wrong. You you can go ahead, right? Some and uh, the two police officers were sentenced to death. I right? a little bit unfair uh, system. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody was saying like, look, police officers don't just kill people. They have to work on orders. Who gave the order? Yeah, for no reason. Go, go kill a model. A model. They don't just kill models, yeah. at least. I mean, I've been yeah, to so Malaysia. There's a lot to do on a Friday night. You don't have to. You don't have to come up with things. There's to plenty do. of women out there. You don't need to murder a mom. <laughs> so the backstory to this was when it came out during the trial was that so this model Altantuya was the uh, translator for the purchase of two submarines that were bought from France. Right, she was the translator, and then she had an affair with Raza and allegedly with Najib as well. Now, we don't know. We don't know if that's true or not. Uh, again, it's still allegedly. Okay. And then uh, what happened was she wanted her money. Where she wanted basically her share of the, the the bribe that was happening, and she showed up in Raza Baginda's house. And Raza Baginda allegedly called Najib and his wife Rosma, and they sent in the special branch to pick her up and take care of her. Yeah. Right. So, so what year was that, roughly? This was in 2012, if I was not mistaken, or 2015, something like that. Okay. And that's so before he stole the 4.6 billion, or he was in the. Oh, no, that was while he was stealing the 4.6. While he was stealing it, because okay. because the purchase of the the submarines as well, that was when he was defense minister, hmm. right? So he was in charge of the purchase of the two submarines. Now I can tell you this 
because I've seen it with my own eyes. The, those submarines don't sink. <laughs> I mean, yeah. submarines have one job. Not to, right? yeah, they go underwater. So you mean yeah. when you put the model in charge of picking the new submarines, it doesn't? <laughs> or she was translating. Was a bad translation. She asked for floating submarines, maybe. On <laughs> she asked for a boat. <laughs> she asked to be exploded. I don't know. <laughs> and what language is she translating? Like in yeah. Malaysia, people speak English. French people really can't learn English to the point where they need a Mongolian translator. Yeah, I don't know. She speaks Russian, French. Mm. Yeah. She's like really, you know, multilingual. And I mean, she was she was hard at work. Uh, Good for her. So anyway, uh, moving on. God rest her soul. Uh, <laughs> her. <laughs> no, but she, and then she uh, basically was blown up. So there's two uh, two police officers were stuck in jail, right? They and then about two years later, they were uh, their appeals went through, and they were like, "Ah, oh, you're free now." It went from death penalty to off out of jail. Yeah, death penalty to well done. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, but. And then the prosecutor appealed again, and then they got the death penalty again. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, that's that that's, sucks. That really sucks. <laughs> yes. Double whammy. Like one of them, <laughs> that's one a of them jeopardy, really yeah. smart. What he did was he left. He left to Australia. And that's when, so he's, he's detained in Australia where he said, where there's no extradition for the death penalty. Okay, right. Smart. So he's he's detained in Australia, and he said, "I'm staying here where I'm not gonna die. I'm not going back to Malaysia where they're gonna kill me." And so the thing was, a lot of people have been asking him to, you know, tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. But he's he's been he's been quiet for now. So that put that aside, okay. right? So then, as Prime Minister, Najib received, uh, I think it was two point four or is it seven hundred eighty six million US dollars in his private account right i saw he said he said he didn't do anything wrong but he did acknowledge that the money did appear in his private account <laughs> oh yeah no at first at first he was like what private account i yeah. don't know anything about this <laughs> and then uh, there was this there's this investigative investigative journalist called uh, uh claire brown from the uk and she she used to live in sarawak so she used to she used to uh, you know expose like you know the sarawakian you know lumber tycoons blah 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 so what she did was she got a document and you know a few letters from the swiss guy who was uh, detained uh, not well he's detained in in he was detained in thailand but that was before that so what this swiss guy was working for a company called petro saudi right so now what happened was uh najib created this sovereign wealth fund called 1mdb Right, which is supposed to invest money for Malaysia, okay. so they got one billion US dollars Jeez. to invest in this company called Petro Saudi. Now, Petro Saudi sounds legit, mm -hmm. you know. It sounds like a real oil company, right? Oh yeah, Petro it sounds Saudi. like. I mean, it's, it's Saudi. I mean, they have oil. <laughs> I would buy a hundred shares of that if you told me to. I mean, it sounds like a real thing. <laughs> yeah, but if you look it up, they don't exist. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, they don't own any oil. Like it's 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 just Petro Saudi. It's just like you know Petro right. Kaplan. It, it's just yeah. like, it's, it's a name. It's like a movie, like a name of a movie oil company. But it's, yeah, yeah. So they so one MDB apparently put in one billion US dollars into this venture. Right now, it's all obviously being managed by this guy called Joe Low, who basically nobody knows. Uh, if Joe he, Low, Joe, shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Lowe, uh, the party man of the Malaysian Straits. I don't know. Uh, so, so apparently, so this was all set up by Joe Lowe, right? Now he, they have this Petro Saudi. And then, so this guy, uh, the Swiss guy who was working there, so he was hired by the Petro Saudi bosses and said, look, you, you just take care of the accounts. Don't worry about anything. You take care of the accounts, right? So he was like, yeah, as long as you pay me $5 million a year. And they were like, "Yeah, that's fine. Five million dollars. Here you go." They put him up in a in a in a suite in Switzerland. Everything was great. He was having a good time. And then they stopped paying him. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Nobody knows, right? Yeah, so really. he's owed about he's owed about I think ten or fifteen million or something like that. Uh, yeah. He so he never got his money. And uh, he was 
he was getting antsy. He was calling the bosses and going like, where's my money? And they were like, yeah, just do your job, man. Just do, just do your job. Don't worry, the money's coming. And after two years, he left. He, he, he left the job. He went to Thailand, right? To What, what he did was he, he created a, a, a spa kind of hotel, yeah. a villa. So, and he was there, he was having a good time, but he was calling the bosses and go like, look, you owe me money. If you don't pay me the money, I'm going to release the emails that you've sent. You got to right? pay your and hush gonna, money. I mean, I understand oh, yeah. they're getting, they're, they're making billions and they're not going to pay a guy 5 million a year. Yeah, like that no seems sense. like nothing getting greedy here. Yeah. And all he wanted was his 5 million. Right. Yeah, and it's reasonable. So he, so he, so he, it's obvious that Petro Saudi bosses were not going to pay him. So he called the Malaysian media and said, look, for five million dollars, you can have this, oh. right? Five. <laughs> this, is this is price for everything. He's selling Flat. it to the newspaper. <laughs> Would they yeah, have and the Malaysian. There times? was a newspaper called The Edge in Malaysia, and they decided, you know, this could be something worth looking at. And Claire Brown was there as well, and she she showed up to the meeting in Thailand, and he gave them the the papers and said, no, do I get my 5 million now? And they were like, oh, let us look at it and we'll see. Right. So they took the, and, and they were like, look, there's, there's this painting. I, I can't remember what painting it was, but it was an expensive painting. And you can take this as collateral. And the Swiss guy just went, ah, it's okay. I trust you. Uh, so, Oh, oh wow. <laughs> so they got the Very document. Trusting this guy. Oh this yeah. Guy is... uh, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> sucker, right? uh, He's not a great <laughs> businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so they go back to Malaysia, they look at the documents and it's very damning. It's, uh, you know, it's basically, you know, uh, money that's gone into the Malaysian uh, prime minister's private account and stuff like that. So they publish it like they immediately publish it without paying. Wait, what about the five mil? Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> so they publish it. And then what happens is uh, the Swiss guy gets arrested in Thailand. Right. So he's. <laughs> He's, he's, he's put in jail and like, you know, because of blackmail, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Apparently, the, it was blackmail. That, that, was, that was the charge. I would imagine. But the right? part of the blackmail is you need to get something or at least like, you know, <laughs> didn't even give him anything. Well, he got screwed. That's what yeah. he got. And, not uh, a good blackmailer. <laughs> blackmail 101. At least. Uh, <laughs> so he's gone to jail, right? Now, so they, they've released that. And, and, and Najib first came out and said, oh, no, there's nothing. I don't know anything about this. I don't know. This is not true. Yeah. Not true. Not true. And then the guy from the bank comes out and says, yeah, this happened. And, uh, you know, why wasn't it, uh, you know, public knowledge at that time? Because you have to, you know, uh, tell the government that you made that much money. And yeah. then later on, Najib changed his story. He said, yeah, I knew about it, but it was a donation from the Saudi government. Yes. Uh, so, or Saudi, Saudi monarch. Really. So he had to uh, step down at this point or is he still flying? He's still fighting it. <laughs> oh, no, there's nothing wrong. It's a donation. That's, oh, it's that's a donation. oh, yeah. 780. <laughs> how much? Uh, let me ask you this, right? I'm sure you know this. How much did uh, Biden get uh, from uh, election donations? I don't know, actually. Cap, do you know? That would be about six hundred million. Yeah. I made my, I made my. Uh, but he, but he had to spend it on things. He had to spend it on oh, advertising, yeah, yeah, and he didn't just put it in his bank account. I assume. And, and be a real scandal. One, it's not from one donor. I mean, he's got it from like right. a, a lot oh, yeah. of people. Yeah, right? whatever, hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, and uh, six hundred million. And before that, Obama got about five hundred million. Before that, uh, whoever got four hundred million. And of course, I'm not talking about Trump because I do. He finances. Trump actually, got way less than everyone else. He never. Yeah, because he financed money. most oh, of it. Do yeah. any of these guys have anything to do with Petro Saudi? Do we have any news to break or no? No, 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 not at all. I'm just, I'm just doing a comparison. Oh, yeah. Like you know, the fact that look, an American president gets about six hundred. Oh, he gets even less. <laughs> right, right. He gets less than them. <laughs> Yeah, Good and point. this guy can 783 million for one donor. Like, yeah. that's just you need some campaign finance laws. We have caps and stuff. <laughs> and how much one person can give? I think it's like 2300. What or was something. the name so of that? If super I open it only fans, I'm not fine gold. That <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So he he's like, no, this is a this is a donation, nothing is wrong. So the anti-corruption agency comes along and says, we're going to do an investigation on you. Two weeks later, they said, you did nothing wrong. Wow. <laughs> Tough investigation. He's their boss? Is that yeah, the of course. 
You and cannot they, investigate and, me. I'm investigating myself. <laughs> that is exactly what he did after that yeah. because he started a a a, a, a one MDB investigation uh, council, right? Yeah. And he's the chair of that council. <laughs> Awesome. And basically, over the years, found nothing wrong with their accounts. Sure, nothing wrong. Like you know, even the the CEO of One MDB, uh, you know, this guy, he just goes around and says, "Look, we've got the money. We are not in debt. We're okay. The money is right here, right here, right here. We've got <laughs> money, no problem. Right? We've been paying our debts. Yes, we are in a a billion debt. Right? They they've got a billion dollars debt, uh, because that's what they invested in." Uh, Petro Saudi, and they're like, look, we've got assets, we've got land, we've got this, we've got that, we've yeah. got money, no problem. We've been paying our debts, right? So everything was great, and then came the 2018 elections, right? Now the people obviously didn't buy this shit, right? Nobody bought this, <laughs> right? They, Nobody bought this. Can I ask what are the? It's like the it's it obviously the media is free. It's it's not it, it's not a control. The media is not controlled by the government. So in the newspaper every day, are they reporting on all this stuff? It's very no knowledge. No, like, the media is completely controlled by the government, and oh, not yes. not not because of the fact that the media is owned by the government. No, it's because the government uh, comes out with licenses, right? So basically, yeah. uh, every year your license get re- gets renewed for a media company, right? For papers, for uh, the TV, the radio. And I used to work on radio. So there were yeah. so many things we couldn't say because of that, right? So mm. the moment you you go against the government, the government goes, all right, your license, gone. Ah, so so this, uh, the British lady though, she wasn't working for a Malaysian newspaper or media. No, no, no. She works for her own blog. She, so, okay, she, got she, it. Yeah, it's called the Sarawak Report because she used to she used to expose the Sarawak, you know, uh, lumbering tycoons and how they you know rape the land more or less, you know, okay. basically from like you know, basic uh, you know, it's just illegal lumber and stuff like that. And basically, when she got her hands on this, she was like, "Hell yeah!" Because she was the yeah. only one who could do it. Yeah. And the Edge, the Edge as well, because when the Edge, basically a Malaysian newspaper published it, they came up with the headline. That was this could be our last issue. Yeah. W- was it what happened to them? Did they 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 got yeah, their their license got revoked. That was their last it was issue. their last <laughs> issue. It was, it was go out with uh, a blaze of glory. If you're thinking of getting out yeah. of the business anyway, you might as well. Yeah, yeah so basically rag. they were just no look, they're back now because oh. you know, uh but it, I mean, the thing is, look, they, 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 it was a calculated risk and I understand why they did it. It just went like, look, you know, this could be our last, but we have, you know, journalistic integrity, we have to do this. So they put it out, everything went, uh, you know, out and then, you know, people started getting to know this. So, yeah, but 2018 by 2018, elections, by the election. they had journalist integrity, except for paying the guy who gave them all the information that they... Hang on. Well, yeah. you know, that guy's blackmail. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, that, that guy. That guy's in jail now. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, right? cares. Uh, yeah. There's so, there's an account you can look at, look it up. Uh, like you know, he's a, he has a blog or something that you know basically tells everything that he, that happened to him in prison and it's horrible. It's horrible. Thai prisons. I'm sure you know uh, that oh, it's yeah. horrible. Ever spent any time <laughs> in a Thai prison, Billy? <laughs> I don't know. You look like someone who would spend time in a Thai prison. <laughs> Me? But, yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I didn't know it was a lady boy. Anyway, I don't think that's illegal. I think oh, that's yeah. fine. Okay, good. I didn't know it was seven. No, go on. <laughs> Again, that's fine. Uh, but moving on very quickly. The fact. <laughs> no, the, okay. So 2018 elections, right? He, he, he. The the campaign. He spent a lot of money. He had to spend a lot of money. Uh, you know, telling everyone that look, there was nothing wrong. It was a donation from the Saudi king. Now. If you wanted to check whether it was a donation from the Saudi king, he died, uh, unfortunately. So nobody could check. Like mm-hmm. even his kids were like, "We don't know." He, he gives money to everyone. Yeah. Right. So so yeah, nobody could check. Uh, everybody was like, "Yeah, it's a donation." Fine. Uh, so that was the campaign, right? So the, even the guys from the One MDB, they were going out and campaigning for the ruling government, saying that, "Look, we have money." We have money stored here. We have money stored here. We have assets. We have this land. We have this building. We have this. So we, our money is right here. We have all the money and we pay, we are, we're paying all our debts we pay, and we are fine, right? Come the election, 
everybody votes for the the coalition now the biggest the other the opposition party the opposition party right and the thing is the biggest controversy there was that they because mahate was very outspoken against najib as well especially with all this right now uh, his najib's a uh, deputy prime minister vice uh, vice prime minister so he spoke out against najib now he was fired from his party and then he started his own party with and that's mahate. anwar no with mahate oh, that's so that was the okay. party paribhumi pppm which basically then had a coalition with anwar anwar in 1998 yeah i forgot this one 1998 was was uh, you know mahate's uh vice prime minister as well now he got fired and thrown in jail for sodomy charges and of course uh, corruption as well it's a cap on talked about earlier for uh gay gay acts right yeah yeah sodomy yes. basically was sodomy. the the thing so Embe- did right. they say embezzlement and yeah sodomy combo or yeah embezzlement and so- sodomy yes but nobody cared about the embezzlement part right was the sodomy yeah. legit or was it just a uh, trumped <laughs> so up is it illegal it's illegal to be gay in in oh. malaysia It's not illegal to be gay, but not so to speak, right? But the thing is, it's uh, sodomy is illegal. Okay. Unnatural acts of sex, apparently. Uh, you know. So yeah, like in like in Singapore as well. Uh, if like in Singapore, it's a bit more re- relaxed because if you even blowjobs are illegal, apparently. I just found this out. And in Singapore, like if you give a blowjob, you must follow up by sex. Whoa. <laughs> If not it's in You hear yeah, that ladies? <laughs> yeah, you have no getting out of it. No saving yourself till marriage with the blow job. Oh God. Jesus. Yeah, I wish I went to high school. I wish I wish I went to college in this. <laughs> I know. Oh, this is in Singapore. In, in Malaysia, blow jobs are illegal, right? Ooh. It's not it's Oh my god. Blow jobs in no sex. Um Uh, titty fuck I don't know wait it's female to male blowjobs are illegal no because yeah, it's Even an unnatural male, act male, to male it doesn't matter all blowjobs you can't give yourself all blowjobs the meaningless you can limber <laughs> yeah not, nothing that's all not, but it's not enforced unless okay. you're the vice prime minister of Malaysia what, right? if, so, what if you were a cop and that was your beat Yeah, <laughs> blowjob beat. <laughs> just going busting into people's houses. Every car you go by and the lookout <laughs> point, you're looking at it. Like mm. it's funny you should say that because we do have a, a vice police and basic. Okay, so basically the the religious uh, department of Malaysia uh, called uh, Jakim. So they have like in every state they have this vice police and they knock on hotel doors. In the middle of the night, to make sure that nobody's having, you know, unnatural oh or gosh. intercourse. Yeah. Speaking of uh, well, none well, of that, I don't know. That's a good segue. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> none of that, we're, we it's time to advertise a children's cereal, Kevin. Yeah. Actually, this is our this is our sponsor, Kevin. Uh, the uh, Magic Spoon. This is <laughs> the number one cereal in our hearts. I think in the world. I think it's fair to say in the world. Just don't it's, fact check that. It's not just a cereal. It's a way of life. This cereal is taking over the world right now. Kevin, you remember when you were a kid? I don't know what cereal was like uh, in Malaysia when you were growing up, but here it was like there was two families. There was either the family that just said, hey, kids, do whatever you want. And those right. kids ate just all that sugary cereal. Like it, you had to, it was basically like just having a big bowl of sugar for breakfast. And apparently in the 80s, the boomer parents thought that was a good idea. That was one half. If you're like then, you end up like Kaplan. If you're the like then, your, kid, your kids end up bribing people and embezzling money. Exactly. Right. Uh, the other one is you end up like you end up like me or, or a cop. We could say the people we were talking about earlier where you um, the, uh, the other kids got the the, the gr- kind of just bland cereal. It had no store. sugar in it, but it was healthy for you. Yeah. Now we have Magic Spoon. This combines both. This is all both. the sugary cereals you you had as a kid. All the flavors, except for there's no sugar in it. So they have four cocoa, fruity, frosted, blueberry. Those are the flavor options, plus a whole bunch of other flavors. It has zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, three net grams of carbs in each serving. It tastes amazing. It's too good to be true. It's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free. Kaplan. 
And we should tell people that we haven't mentioned this before. We have big news this week. Yes. If you go to magicspoon.com uh, backslash lost, you get, and you enter in the promo code lost when you're buying at checkout, you don't just get free shipping. You know, people said free shipping's not enough. We want more. We heard you. We've made it happen. You get five dollars off. Yes. Here's your, what happened. Your entire order. So. They said they we've been we since we started working with Magic Spoon and Kevin, this is our we've been doing this podcast for four years. This is our first ever paying sponsor. So we need our listeners to buy Magic Spoon <laughs> so we can continue feeling not feeling like losers. Uh so we need them to buy it. We could we could keep the show going, but they said. Listen, guys, we're going to give you free shipping for all your listeners if they go to magicspoon.com slash lost and it use the promo code lost to check out. We said, fine, that sounds good. Kaplan was hearing from the listeners the past couple weeks. He went over to the Magic Spoon headquarters. Yeah. He told them, we need more. I said, they we, said tough we can't times are give tough. You. They I said, said we can't give you more. We're, we're tight. And he said, I don't care. We do need more. They said, fine, Cap, for you, $5 off. Five dollars off. And let me just tell you something, you know, in my family, we're talking about routines and everything. It's one of those things when you grow up and you have children, you you know, you want to like relive what you did as a kid. You want to sit down, have a family meal together. You cook a you have <laughs> dinner, you talk about your day. But, but you know, with the quarantine, and everything, you just don't do it. It never happens. The TV's on. Everyone's eating at different times. Nobody wants to talk. Everyone's on their phone. The other day, something magical happened in my home. Breakfast time on a Saturday pulled out the magic spoon. Ruby Kaplan had a bowl of blueberries she wanted. Teddy Kaplan wanted a bowl of Frosty. Randy Kaplan wanted the, this uh, cocoa that I'm holding up. I wanted a mix of everything. I took a little fruity, a little Frosty, a little blueberry, a little cocoa. I put it all in a bowl, sat down. It, did, it just happened naturally, organically. I wasn't, didn't, even, didn't plan it. Sit down and I looked up and we were all just sitting there talking about our day, what we're going to do today. We're eating cereal, no phones. No like a 1950s family. On we TV. were transformed to 1950, but with less sugar. It was magical. You're it like was, the cleavers. It was. It was. We were the cleavers, <laughs> the Kaplan cleavers. It was. And then I looked at the box. I think Ruby actually pointed out to me. She said, Daddy, what does that say? And it says on this box, hold on to the dream. And, you know, well, here's speaking it, of holding on to this dream. Kaplan, one thing we've also failed to mention, happiness, 100 percent guaranteed. Happiness, Kevin. Have you ever heard of a company guaranteeing happiness? Hold on. How do you how do you guarantee one hundred percent happiness? You have a damn good product, and you give people five dollars back. That's <laughs> <laughs> no. And if they're not I, happy, I'm, I'm I think if you're not happy, they'll give you your money back. I mean, I, I don't don't quote me. I'm only reading the ad. Yeah. If you're not happy, I'm on general, the website now, I'm buying like three. Do they do they do they send uh, outside of the U.S. Oh, that's the issue. That's going to be the next time I go down there. The next time I head to headquarters, I'm going to kick some tables over and say, we have an international audience. We got to put on out. his three piece suit to get his five dollars <laughs> off. He's going to have to put on a five piece suit to get him to uh, ship how, international. How people in Azerbaijan going to buy this? Well, Azerbaijan, they don't like us. We, we have we do not have. We, that's our lowest rated. That's not even a bit. We have we've looked at the numbers. We have like one listener in the whole country. We, we are. You not. know what we told you earlier? We're the most popular podcast in Armenia. Yeah, we don't. Want, we don't we're also the least popular podcast in Azerbaijan. The Armenians are going to eat this cereal so that they're ready for the next war. They're going to be in better shape. <laughs> the Azerbaijan's Armenians are going to be fat from their sugar and they're not going to see it coming. Yeah, yeah you got to make dog wins. It's like a when you go movie. in your five piece suit cap, you got to make sure that they ship to Azerbaijan. I mean, to, to Armenia, all of not our allies. Azerbaijan. Yeah, we want our allies. Only you, all countries. the countries we do podcasts with that we have a good relationship with. Malaysia, we're going to we're going to figure it out because, yeah, look, it's Martin Luther King Day here in New York, here in America. He had a dream. I have a dream. Hold on to the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Eat. Eat well. It's Jan it's not too late. New Year's all that stuff. Make a resolution. Lose weight. I'm going to I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to lose some weight. Look at me. I'm a, I'm disgusting, but I'm changing. That <laughs> disgusting <laughs> and seen. Now a word from your local sponsors. <laughs> All right, we're back, Kevin. Um, back to the blowjobs. <laughs> back to no, let's skip ahead. I yeah, want to yeah. skip ahead because we're already yeah, halfway ahead. through. And this, this story that, is that, that was a great segue. What's that, that? Yeah, that was a great segue because that's exactly how you know the the ruling party was 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 selling you know re-election uh, in 2018, and uh, it was like really how great. we sell magic spoon. Oh yeah, exactly. Not as well. <laughs> no way. It was as well. Good job. You get five dollars <laughs> off if you vote. <laughs> Actually, they got a little bit more, about hundred ringgit, I think. Uh, there was but, uh, about two dollars. 
maybe a hundred percent happiness guarantee, but unlike unlike the Malaysian prime minister, this is magic. We spoon. just keep That's- going. We can't stop the spot. <laughs> <That's magic spoon. laughs> All right, let's skip ahead. Yeah, so let's get so, to the- so right. 2018. Um, mm-hmm. Najib loses and uh, uh, Mahathir wins. Right? Mahathir, big power, right? So now He's back. he was the fourth prime minister, also the seventh. Uh, it's weird, right? He's so the he's 94 the ninety-four year old we mentioned earlier. Yes, he was ninety-three when he took power. He's ninety-five now. Uh, so and was yeah, he popular he, when he was on the first time around? Did people they want or were they welcome him back? Was this a yeah? Yes, is, he, I mean, is, is he like a grandfather? Oh, we all love him, or is he like a kind of a ruler dictator? Type? Oh no! At that time, we all loved him because you know he spoke up against Najib and nobody else was. And the fact that look, you know, he had a uh, you know, and, and at that time. Everybody was like, oh, you, you know, the savior. And he promised to give Anwar uh, the, the, the prime ministership in two years. This right? was in 2018. So, this is in 2018. So yeah, 2020, yeah. Anwar was supposed to take over. Right. So he promised, I'm 94. I don't, you know, I'm not going to live for very long, which is, you know, I think he's going to live forever. And <laughs> he uh, must be eating magic spoon, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he has a magic spoon, and so and, and the thing was, look, uh, you know, everything was great. We, we made documentaries. Everybody was partying in the streets. You know, immediately, immediately, uh, you know, everyone from the one MDB left. Uh, they raided Najib's house and they found they're just lying around. I think uh, about two hundred and eighty million dollars just lying around. Which is in like a suitcase or something? In cash? Just, yes, actually. No, it was in suitcases. I kid you not. Oh my God. It was in multiple suits. So they raided his house, one of his houses. And basically, they just found suitcases over suitcases of jewelry, uh, cash in different currencies. Mm. Uh, they found just basically handbags, which is... Okay, you know how Imelda Marcos in in, uh, in Philippines... A lot of shoes. shoes. Yeah. So Rosma, who was the you know, Prime Minister's wife uh, in Malaysia, she's with handbags, right? So, Belkins, you know, all sorts. So, they found 280 million, or was it 100? It was 100 million. 100 million dollars worth of products and cash just lying around his house. I made a note. It was over, it was like 537 handbags she had or something like that. It was in the 500s. That is correct. Randy Kaplan, impressive. (laughs) I have like three shoes. And, <laughs> and so they found all that. And then they, and then suddenly the guys from 1MDB changed their tune immediately. They were like, so where's the money? We don't know. We never had any money. Right. So oh, this was is like, this party. Yeah. They, they know. Yeah. So Look. this was, this was three weeks ago. They were saying like, you know, 1MDB has the money. We've been paying our debts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The moment yeah. the opposition takes over, they look at the accounts and they go, yeah, we never had any money. Right? Yeah. We were laughing. Uh, you know, so basically they found out that they haven't paid their debts. They haven't paid, uh, you know, the interest in their debts. And they've owed more than $1 billion in, in debts. And the fact that, you know, the company was basically just being bailed out by the government with, uh, you know, the funds. So it was government money. It was taxpayer dollars that were paying oh, yeah, those of debts. Uh, of course, gosh. yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, e- everything just crumbled. Right, uh, Najib tried to run away. <laughs> this was this was my favorite story of the whole thing. Right, so he came out. He said, "Look, you know, we've lost the elections, blah blah blah." And then gets into a car and drives straight to the airport, right, to get out. Of- <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good sign. Yeah, he that's didn't not contest the results. He didn't say it's a minion or anything. He just- <laughs> No, no, no. It's leaving the country. He, I'm out. He was just saying, I'm tired. I'm going on a holiday. That's what that was. I'm leaving the- my handbags <laughs> behind. <laughs> yeah, and. And then he, at, at the airport, like, just people were at the, just stopped everyone from entering the airport, right? He couldn't, he couldn't enter the airport because they were, they were blocked by people just barricading, just going, nope, you're not going anywhere. Oh, oh. they knew he was doing that. I like he it. He was this yeah. unpopular. Wow. No, and the thing was that they, they went online immediately. People were online and on watches for, for flight charters, and they were looking for, like, private flights out of Malaysia and they found like, you know, the one that was registered to Najib or Najib's aid and they just blocked that flight. They're just like, no, you're not going anywhere. Whoa. Clever. Yeah. So, so, so he had to stay. 
And then, uh, you know, so yeah, everything was great. 2018, we had, you know, we were showing off to Singaporeans that we could have an election. We had democracy and, you know, we were showing off to the world. And then 2020 hit. You mean the pandemic? Uh, yeah, not only that. Uh, pandemic hit, yes. But also the fact that, look, in the oh, coalition... Uh, the coalition the crumbled. Coalition. The, the 94-year-old uh, Mahathir's uh, coalition crumbled in February 2020. Yeah. Right. Yes, in February 2020, what happened was, so he was being pressured because it was 2020, it's two years after the election. He was being pressured to say, you know, step down. You're 95, just step down, you know, chill out. Just <laughs> give... Retire. Uh, retire. Just, you know, you're 90. Yeah. Shut the hell up and just leave, you know? Uh, so, and give it to Anwar, right? And apparently... There were people in Anwar's party who were not happy with, you know, being second fiddle as well. They wanted to be prime minister. Because they had won so, as a coalition, but yet Anwar's side, his part of the coalition didn't have much power. Right? Is that right? Yeah, no. The thing is, they were the highest number of seats in the parliament. Yeah. So they had power. But the thing was that because of how Malaysia works, so basically, like, you know, a lot of people from the then opposition switch sides. So Amno, the 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 party that was in power before this, before yes. the 2018 elections. So a lot of the member of parliament switch sides to Mahathir's party, right? Mm -hmm. So because they still wanted to be in power, so they switched sides. So you know the 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 parity between the seats was not much. So but yes. still Anwar's party was the most powerful, right? So the thing was, the arrangement was that he was prime minister, uh, Mahathir was prime minister for two years and then he gives it for Anwar, right? Now, Mahathir just went, I don't know if I want to give it away now. <laughs> I don't know. A pandemic well, coming up, I want to run this. Of course. I don't know if I want to give it away to him, you know? I, I maybe want to give it away to someone else. You, you never know, want to give know. it away to a guy that you previously imprisoned. Yeah. Uh, so and they were and they were that's, that's and point. they were giving so much pressure to to Mahate that Mahate just went, I'm I'm not going to do anything. And then what happened was, uh, so this guy uh, Asbin Ali, who was basically An Anwar's personal aide at one point, and then became you know rose higher up in the party, and then he got disillusioned because he wanted to be prime minister as well. Oh boy! Right. Here so he was lobbying to Mahate that look. Don't give it to Anwar, give it to me, right? And Mahathir was like, yeah, I can't just give it to you. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. So yeah. basically what he did was he he he, he uh, structured a meeting with the previous uh, government, Amno and other guys, and the party of Mahathir with Muhyiddin. Uh, you know, he scheduled a meeting and he said, look, we've got enough seats. Let's us take over. Let's see what happens, right? Mm. So Mahathir was supposed to be in that meeting as well, but he was like, oh, nobody called me, so I'm just going to the king. So he goes to the king and he says, I resign. Right? And why, yeah, what, uh, I know that he resigned for some strategic reason, but why would Mahathir resign in this, in this situation? Nobody understands why. What he said was because, oh, I, I don't have the the majority in parliament anymore. So therefore I must resign. But yeah, that's the, I call bullshit because, you know, I, nobody understands why he would do that because if he would have stayed prime minister, he would have just settled everything and everything would be fine. Right. But yeah. no, he, he resigned because he refused to join with the Amno uh, party. He's like, no, I'm not going to. 95 year olds are 95 year olds are very stubborn. You know, yes. you, you can't, there's no rhyme or reason what they do sometimes. So, just, <laughs> so he resigned and immediately after he resigned, the king said, okay, if you resign, fine, but I'm going to make you interim prime minister while I decide what happens. Right. So I have a question here. Mm. Does the king um, have the power? I guess the king does have the power to just pick prime ministers because normally it goes to a vote. Right. Right. Okay. I have to tell you this. We have 13, 13 sultans, right? So each state sultans. has its own. 13 kings, right? but, yeah. So basically what happens is every five years, they take turns to become the, the, the king. Okay. Right? So it was this guy, sorry, it was this sultan uh, who was the, the king at that time. And what happened was he, his majesty 
decided to you know he he has the power if if the government crumbles he has the power to elect the prime minister a pick okay right so yeah. basically what happens is he elects the prime minister with the uh obviously with the 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 parliament at its side kind of you know it's 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 very much a ceremonious thing it's it's not really a power power but it's a ceremonious it's kind of like the queen of england yes that she right it's, that's what i was understanding it, it. They, the like, queen of england will say like you could form a government but it's really more they do it for show it's like ceremonial so this, is this the first time in a while where they actually really did it like they had they made a like the the king actually yes, chose yeah. a person because yeah. p- typically right. they'll just pick whoever gets the, the most, most votes or the yeah. most votes. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. So and the king so, was new this, too, right? The king was there was a oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The other king resigned. A, a king resigned just last year. There was a skin. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes. So let's, uh, so, let's stick on this because yeah, yeah. I don't know how much time we have left. Yeah. So right. Can. So okay. So then he, uh, the king decided that okay, you know what? Uh, since everybody is, we don't know who the majority is. So he called every single party to his palace and he said, tell me, tell me who you support, right? So after all that, I think there was a slight majority to Muhyiddin, right? So he said, look, I'm going to give it to Muhyiddin, right? At the same time, Mahathir was saying, oh, no, I want to be prime minister again. Right? So Muhyiddin is the guy, where does Muhyiddin come from in this? Okay, Muhyiddin was, part, was the vice prime minister of Malaysia when Najib was was prime minister under right? the so, super corrupt guy. So yes. now Muhyiddin, does he just kind of not necessarily come out of nowhere? Obviously he's a known person, but if Mahati Mahathir is the, is the prime minister mm-hmm. and then he crumbled his prime ministership or he, he resigns. Yes, he did. Then now anyone can run. Anyone can not run, but anyone can ask the King to make them prime minister. Is that if you had the numbers in the parliament. He would have to make you the prime minister. You have okay. to form a coalition of the other of enough government. So everybody yeah, just yeah. scrambles real quick to try to form a coalition. Oh yeah, so basically everybody scrambled, and uh, at the same time, Mahathir just went, "I want to be prime minister again. I have the numbers." I'm, but why right? did he I'm resign? Not, why did he resign then? I don't understand. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody. This is 90, he's 90, old people. I'm telling you, this is ridiculous. They, <laughs> they not this love like. This is like when you take your grandpa out of like a, a diner, and he's yeah. like, "I don't want to eat here. They have nothing good." And yeah. then you leave and he's like, I'm hungry. Let's go get something to eat. <laughs> exactly. exactly. They burnt the right. eggs. I, I, I told him to bur- I said, burn the fries. Well done. <laughs> and they're burnt. I, I we're leaving. That's what old people do. It's no logical. So, yeah. At that point, the king just went, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not looking at anybody else. I'm just, you know, Muhyiddin, you're the prime minister, right? So the king didn't want to deal with it. So he said, Muhyiddin, you're the prime And this is in February of last year. Yeah, yeah. So, and then Muhyiddin took over. And, and what do the people think of this? Like, did, were people, the population generally in support of this or? No, not at no. all. Oh, like, okay. I mean, we voted for a government and now the problem was Muhyiddin's coalition involved the party that was, you know, corrupt and basically yeah. voted out over 2018 and we were celebrating and now they're back in power. They're back, yeah. Right? Wow. And, you know, Najib, who's part of that party, uh, the, uh, what's his name, Zaid Hamidi, uh, which is another guy who's, okay, so Najib is facing 36 charges in court, right? Zaid, uh, Zaid is facing about 40 something charges as well. Now, there were other senior members of the party that were, you know, also facing a lot of charges in currently happening as well. So now they are in power. So everybody was just upset that, you know, since they're in power, they're just going to drop all the charges because that's what happened to people. Oh, so once you get, so once, Another, uh, yeah, once you get your power theme. back, you can almost make yourself like, uh, you can pardon yourself pardon. of sorts. Yeah, of course. Uh, you don't, I mean, you don't pardon yourself, but you control the courts and you tell the judge like, look, if you want to survive, just drop the charges and yeah. everybody's everybody, lets everybody off wins. Out. And here's so, a here's some handbags as a little tip. <laughs> here's some handbags <laughs> for your wife. But. And so there's no. And now there can't be an elect. The king has decided no election because of coronavirus. Is that right? OK, so that that's a whole different story as well. So oh, okay. now in 2000 and in the end of 2018, Anwar suddenly stepped up and said, look, I have the numbers. Right, the end I of have, 2020. End of 2020. End of 2020. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he just went, 
I have the numbers. I have, you know, I have enough members of parliament in support of me to become prime minister, right? So uh, just before that, we had an, uh, an, a state election in Sabah, one of the East Malaysian countries. Uh, and we were doing well with the numbers. We were, we were great uh, with COVID. numbers. We, we had like, you know, two, three cases a day, you know, wow. not many deaths. <laughs> it was great. Everything was, you know, it, we were doing well with the pandemic. And basically what happened was when that election happened, that was when he did and the Amno party, which was the corrupt one, decided that if we win this election, we can show everyone that, you know, we, we're still in power and we, we still want it. This was their election, right? So what they did was they put every single resource they have in that election. They, every single one of them traveled to, to, to Sabah to, you know, campaign without masks, without uh, you know and you know it's it's very it's very rural so it's very poor so you know people don't understand the, the the significance of masks and you know stuff like that so they and they were coming from a place which was heavily infected to a place that were not a rural area which is not heavily infected oh, and basically you know what happens next our numbers just surge oh, super spreader no. that sounds a little familiar to us yes. and this oh, is yeah, all to bit. win a state election because it symbolizes send a message yes. power yes, yes. Yeah. So then your coronavirus numbers spiked, start spiking nationally as a result. Yeah. It does and, sound and familiar, doesn't it? It, it spikes <laughs> like crazy and they win the election. They do oh. win the election, which is fine. But and, then they come back and then the virus just, you know, the numbers just went up and now so then they So they say, then they say, oh, we can't have elections now because the virus is bad. It's sort of a, we made the virus get worse. <laughs> and now we exactly. can't have an election until it's till they said it's until the pandemic's over, which is a pretty open ended statement now, because I mean, we they don't said know it could be happened. August 1st. That's like it, the earliest. It, it right? yeah. yeah. So basically what happened was Anwar came out and said, we have the numbers, blah, blah, blah. And then the Amno party, the corrupt one, basically said, look, we're in a loose co- coalition with this Muidin party. Right. We, we're not really friends. We're just acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I love him, but I love him like a brother. And basically, you know, be, making that coalition a bit loose as well because they they have the original coalition they have to take care of, right? So now Mohidin's feeling the heat under the collar because if it goes to either a parliamentary, you know, kind of uh, vote of no confidence, he would lose. Or if it goes to elections, he knows that his his party has no support because he can't go back to the to the op- opposition coalition anymore. Anwar's coalition, he can't go back to, you know, uh, the, the, the Amno coalition anymore. So he's he's stuck in the middle. So what he did was because of the numbers spiking, he went to the king and said, let's declare a state of emergency. And so, yeah, because he knows he's not going to win whatever comes yeah. next. So and and now it'll be, I mean, he got power in February, March 2020. And yeah. it. So it'll be almost a year and a half. I mean, August before he'll even have earliest. his first yeah. election. He hasn't. There's no- he hasn't won an election at all. No. He hasn't. He hasn't been through an election. But the thing is, look, I, I, I agree up to a point that we need to not have elections, but to not have parliamentary sitting as well. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Wait, the yeah. parliament. So, so there's not even. And it's the king's it's idea. The power until August. Is the king's idea just stability, just whatever's safest? Yeah, the- and I don't think I don't think the king had a much of a choice as well because, as I said, his powers are mostly ceremonial. Yeah, and also the fact that look, if the prime minister, if the prime minister at that time says, look, this is what we want to do, I don't think he has really the power to say no. I mean, I'm sure he does have some influence, but I think you know he just went look for the stability of. The fact that look, he could have been threatened with the fact that look, if you if you don't call a state of emergency, I'm going to dissolve parliament. Yeah. And if you dissolve parliament immediately, there's a you know election, and basically you know what happens, you know spikes. And your, your coronavirus is on your head. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, I think he had a choice, and I think he made a, I I think he made a choice under duress that yeah. look, I I need to keep the people safe, so. You know, I'm just gonna say state of emergency until the until August, and then we'll see what. So, and how long's the king in power for? It just uh, five, five years. 
Yeah. Five, five years. years. Okay. How did that yeah. come about? I like that idea that it's it the king's kind of trade. So you're only that you're only the king for five years, and then it's yeah. else's turn in the next. What person. do you do yeah. when you're are not they, the king? Are the kings all um, <laughs> are they family related to each other, or how no. do they become a king? No. So okay, so the original sultan of each state, right? So this goes back to like ancient history when uh you know Malaysia was founded, it, not Malaysia, but each state was founded, and yeah, each state okay. was founded on a kingdom. Okay. Right, so each state had a kingdom. So when the states came together, each sultan or thirteen of them just you know kind of got together and said, "Look, who who's the king now?" Ah, and they just so they, uh, so they just went like, "Okay, we, we'll do this uh, every five years. One of your one of you guys will be king." That's amazing that that has held. That there hasn't. Can you imagine once. that holds, but the prime ministers don't. You know, I mean? know. So, it's like amazing. the prime minister you can't trust, but the king you can't. Right. The king. Yeah, I mean, no the thing is, there are there are sultans we don't trust. There are sultans we do trust, and you know, this ah. king is actually one of the trusted ones, right? And also the fact that, uh, you know, we he is well loved by the people, and also the fact that, you know, uh, they are also head of their state, so that's fine. Like, you, I think they make, I mean, they're okay with being head of their own state because they yes. have. That that leadership thing going on. Uh, so once they become the king, king, then the you know it's it's basically very ceremonial. And I mean, I'm sure they get a lot of money out of it. But you know, it's it's basically it's not like they have the power anyway. Yeah. Okay. They can't start a war or anything. They're not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if they if they if under martial law they are in charge of the army. So. Oh. If that ever happens. If they, okay. If that, if that <laughs> if, well, we are in martial law right now. Oh, so, oh, because of coronavirus. Because of course. Interesting. So they could. All right. Watch out. And neighbors. What about um because that first the party, uh the first party that 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 the UN Umno. I know you're you, Unmo, is that how you say it? Umno. Umno, Umno, the Umno party was right. in power from like 1957 to 2018. I read yes. a little bit about them. It said that they are the kind of represent the ethnic Malay people, which is yes. 63% of the country. And so therefore, if you can, if you do whatever they want, they'll vote for you. You'll stay in power. Is that kind of how they kept their power? Yeah. It's, I mean, no, the thing is because I it mean, was the a other, coalition as well. You also have the Chinese were 25% or 24% and ethnic Indian was like 7%. Something so, like that, yes. Uh, so basically, Q is the other one percent. <laughs> Q and on uh, yeah. the immigrants, right? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we have, um, uh, we so they, um, no, they had a coalition, right? It's called the Barisa National or the, the the coalition of parties, right? So they had the 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 higher the the Malay party, they had the Chinese party, and they had the Indian party. Right, mm -hmm. so that is why they had the support, and also the oh. fact that look, they had the experience. We didn't really have an opposition for, uh, coalition as much, and whoever we had was just basically smaller parties who didn't really get along with anybody, right? So the I think over the last three elections, that's when you know Anwar's party when he got fired, so he started a party called uh, you know People's Action Party or something like that. And basically started the coalition with the oppositions as well. So they okay. decided. So and the thing is, the 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 ruling party, Barisan National, they are very race based, right? So they have the Malay Party, they have the Chinese Party, they have the Indian Party. Whereas the opposition is more towards the fact that look, we are a Malaysian party. We, yeah, okay. we don't, yeah. We were not like race based. Modern, modern way. Yeah, of and the thing knowledge. is, people are a lot of people are shifting from this mindset to this mindset because. The Indian Party and the Chinese Party didn't get any votes in 2018, right? Or it, it, even before that, in 2014, they didn't get any votes, right? So even the even the ethnic Malays, they are moving on from Amno because of all the money that they've stolen and stuff like that. So they're moving on to you know the opposition as well. So there's a lot of shift happening in the people of Malaysia. I mean, there's still a lot of rural areas where nobody knows what's going on. Nobody has a TV. You know, nobody has internet where they don't know what is happening. So they just want stability. So they just want whatever that's there. Whatever happened they, before. They don't have before. podcasts there. That's no. horrible. Uh, unfortunately, oh you have number one in rural Malaysia. By the oh way, we God. should say that we've hovered around in the top five in the stand-up comedy category for Malaysia. So we've I have hovered. a feeling this is going to go to number one. 
Print the uh, shirts. Print the this shirts. Episode. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't think so because the number one podcast is the Macha Man podcast, which is my podcast in San Francisco. Oh, so, oh. we should promote your podcast. You have a shirt, number one in uh, Malaysia shirts. <laughs> I don't see those. <laughs> Where's your merch? You don't, yeah. The problem is we don't have, uh, you know, sponsors like Magic Spoon. So, uh, hey, Magic Spoon, if you want to get into the Malaysian market, the Macha Man podcast is for you. There we go. We get a cut of that. Anything you get from Magic Spoon. <laughs> We're like uh, we're from the lost in America. We're tree. like Petro Saudi uh, over here. <laughs> Give us a little bit. Throw us some bi- million Petro stuff. Saudi. Yeah. Oh, my wife's yay is going to be happy with the new handbags. I'm going to get her. With <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah. how is the uh, this, this is yeah, go ahead. The story that I've told you is very much a, a, a condensed version of sure. stories because look, we, we can be three hours talking about this and it will not uh, it will not end. I mean, there's a million other questions I didn't even yeah. get to. I'm almost like, like, at some point we need a part two. I want to get yeah. into how the, ra- like historically, how the race, it's interesting to me, um, the the Indian, Chinese, Malay groups. And then I've seen right. it in comedy. Like when I come out and perform with you guys, a lot of the jokes go back and forth right. that way. And I wonder, right. I would imagine in the old days, maybe they were pretty, pretty separate or segregated. And now it, it doesn't seem that way at all. I don't know exactly though, but that maybe oh, that's no, it's, it's getting back. Like, you know, when the, when obviously col- colonial days, it was very separated because that's how, you know, Britain kind of, you know, segregated everybody. To rule, right? But yeah. the thing is, you know, everybody just came together and, you know, it was okay for, and now it's starting to, you know, it's kind of like separating again yeah it's kind of like america right? i was gonna because say that's like us yeah your left and rights are the loudest voices and then you don't hear anything from the middle which is the basic you know the the, the majority anyway. so yeah that's what happens i mean it's, that's the common theme in almost every episode of this we do and it has to be internet it has to be twitter it has to be the internet yeah that's yeah. the only thing Facebook. that all these countries have in common that are having these race relationship problems and all that stuff yeah yeah, need a, um, the alt middle of Malaysia. We're gonna alt middle. We brought that to America. We're gonna bring it to you guys next. <laughs> How's is the is the club open? The crack house or where do you perform? No, these days? Was, well, we're we're in complete lockdown. Martial now law. Of the spikes. Oh yeah, yeah sorry. We're, we're martial law and complete lockdown. So because of the spikes, we're getting two thousand cases. We I think we had four thousand uh, a few days ago cases a day uh, happening, and it's it's pretty much complete lockdown for the next two weeks. But I'm, I'm very sure it's going to be extended as well. So, yeah, the clubs opened up and then they had to close again. And then now it's just closed. Yeah. Are you going to come over to the, once this is all done, come to the U.S.? I did. I did actually come to the U.S. I, I did a show. In, I did a couple of shows in L.A. And I was supposed to come in 2020. There was I bought my tickets and everything. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. We so, talked about you doing our podcast in person a little while back, but we were in yeah. New York. And so... Well, if you come to New York, once this is done, come to New yeah, York. We'll yeah. do some shows together, do the podcast live. No, oh, definitely. It's in the plans. I've got my tickets anyway, so I can't refund it. Oh, oh, nice. You got a credit? <laughs> yeah. Get, getting your points. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Kevin J, thank you so much for doing the podcast, man. Everybody check out Kevin. KevinJ.com. Also watch his, uh, his Netflix special, Everybody Calm Down. Streaming now, streaming all the time on Netflix. Kevin, that's it. Uh, what should we do? Don't listen to his podcast this week. Only listen to ours, but uh, listen to his the rest of the weeks. Because, but oh, anyway, yeah, wait, what's the name of your podcast? What's the name of your podcast? Yeah, it's called the Matcha Man Podcast. The Matcha Man Podcast. I, I like We're that. gonna be the top two podcasts in Malaysia this week. I'm not one gonna say number one and two. Whatever, whatever order that shakes out. We're a team, so if we're number two and he's number one, I think we got to count that because we're giving him a bump. He's giving us a bump. You know. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah we're a coalition we're coalition there you go that's how that's parliamentary right. politics we'll let work. you go we'll let you be first the first week as long as you promise to hand it over to us in right. two. all right you know <laughs> what this do. week you can be number one it's fine all right sounds oh, good oh look at that's that deal it. cap what should we do let's get lost get lost <laughs> <laughs>